Today, we're going to be looking at a 1959 12 horsepower Eldrin made by West Bend. We're going to see what kind of condition it's in and see if we can get it running. This is the After Work Garage. All right, so I got the Elgin on the stand here and open the garage because it's a beautiful day out. Uh, so this is what it looks like. You've got um, pull start here. That might be a problem. Got a, uh, I believe this is the shift. So reverse, neutral. I won't try to force it into forward now because uh, you can bend the shifter. Bend this, uh, see this, the shifter shaft there? As I turn, it goes down to the lower unit. Turns the, turns the prop. There we go. So now we're in neutral. And I believe this cowl comes off like that. And we have a motor. Flywheel's up here. Choke. Oh, that's a that's always good. You want to see that in a motor. So it looks like the flywheel is pretty seized. So this motor might be completely seized up. Let's pull the spark plugs out and maybe put a wrench on it and see what we got. So I'm going to squirt some PV Power Blaster in there, just to uh, see if I can get anything moving. We'll see if we can tilt this motor up. <sighs> Alright. Looks like this pin locks it in place. That was this handle right here. All right, I got a breaker bar on here. It's pretty long, so I'm not gonna not gonna push too hard. But wow, that is that is real stuck. Not looking good. Uh, I guess we'll put this motor aside. Let that penetrating oil sit in there for a little bit and uh, we'll come back to this guy later. Well, here it is. It's still completely seized up. It's been sitting about a day with uh, penetrating oil in both cylinders. I laid it down so that the penetrating oil would get on, it would uh, sink down towards, hopefully towards the cylinder rings, maybe into the crankcase. But I'm thinking it's not really worth it. So instead of sitting here and trying to diagnose it, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rip it apart and we're going to get to see what an engine looks what an old engine looks like inside as well as how bad and how bad this engine is. There's not bolt holes to pull it off of the puller, so I'm going to have to get creative and I'm not quite sure what that's going to look like yet. There's holes there that look like they should be bolt holes for the, and they're located in three places, but they're not threaded. So I'm just gonna tap out the holes with a tap set and thread them, put some screws in there and pull it out. This is why people don't buy puller sets. Because for some reason they seem to only come with two bolts of each kind that you need, which I didn't check before I drilled out all three holes around the center one. So I, I don't know what am I supposed to do? We'll go buy another bolt. I'm gonna try to pull it. This is not this is not ideal. 
because you don't want to pull it cockeyed, otherwise you can jam it up. But this is a tapered thing, so the crankshaft has a taper on it, so it should be okay. And if I have to work it back and forth, I can definitely do that. So we'll just we'll give it a shot. Quick update. So uh, the puller stripped out the aluminum threads. It is stuck on there so hard. Hmm. Weirdly clean under there. Makes me want to look in the cylinders before I start tearing it apart. So here's a look inside the cylinders. Things look pretty rusted up. It doesn't look like something that I'm going to get free by just rocking the engine back and forth. And either way, if I plan on rebuilding this engine, I'm going to have to take it apart regardless. Okay, so I wanted to catch you up on where I am. I got most of the auxiliary parts off here. Got uh, air box right here, carburetors here, bottom side of the flywheel and magneto armature. Anyways, I'm gonna take off, uh, take off this assembly here and we'll get our first look inside the crankcase, which might give us an idea of what's going on. So, took off these two little nuts, lock nuts, uh, on here and here. These are the reed valves, and so when the crankshaft's turning, as, as the piston goes up, uh, the vacuum it creates sucks air in through the carburetor, up in through those reed valves, and then as the piston comes back down, that air in the crankcase here is momentarily pressurized before the piston uncovers, comes down low enough in its stroke to uncover the intake valves. By that time, it, the exhaust valves are already open, the intake valves uncover, and then this pressurized air from the crankcase rushes in, helps push out the exhaust, and then as the piston's going up on its stroke, gets uh, compressed and burned. All right, I'm back again. Okay, it's only been like three minutes. But we're getting the, our first look at the actual reed valve assembly. So those flower looking things, and they look different. Um, sometimes it's just a flap that goes down. Here it's a whole bunch of flaps. Uh, the thin metal plates there are the actual reeds. And these spiky things on the back, they're only loose because I have the nut on very loosely on the back. Um, these are reed stops, and they just prevent the reeds from coming back too far because you don't want them coming back uh, and contacting anything in the engine. Well, there we go. The pistons are definitely rusted in there, <clears throat> but otherwise it looks pretty clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and still take this apart, and this will be the project motor since we got the Evinrude running. And take a look and see what the block looks like, see if we can't, if it's the rust is mild enough, we can just kinda hone out the rust rings, look at the pistons and the bearings, and it may not be worth putting together right away, but it definitely is something worth keeping and working on as a project down the line. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and take the power head off. Instead of messing with this spring engine mount, I'm going to just try to take off these two screws on the bottom. Um, and then it looks like there's just a couple bolts that hold, the, hold it to the leg down here. Here, 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 and the same on the other side. So, once we get those off, it should just come off, off of these, up off of these springs. It's just set in there on those flanges. And I'll check back with you then. Okay, so just about every bolt's been a battle. I got this guy off. Did not get those guys out because they're hard to reach and they're screws because that's what they used apparently. The number of inconvenient fasteners used on this motor at least inconvenient to me, is mind-boggling. So this is a hex head. 
But when I get it in there, how? What? What am I supposed to do? Yes, I realize there's ratchets, and I think what I'm gonna have to end up doing is taking a hexagonal little screwdriver attachment hex piece, putting it in there, and and turning it. So I got these three bolts out. That is not like the others. All right, we're back to the big reveal. I bet you saw that. I forgot the shift linkage. I was too distracted by this, uh, any guesses? Looks like animal fur. And other things. Boy, this... This motor. The prop shaft is turning. But we're making weird noises. I don't know if that's just a impeller that's ruined or we have gear issues. Neither would be inconsistent with what I've found so far. And now we get our prize. have to take you for a look. What on earth was going on here? I'm assuming some rodent ran up in there and uh, was making their nest out of the animal fur. Interesting. There's, there's a bunch of it in there. There's a whole bunch. 